Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. My name is Josh Gordon, and I'm very, very happy to be here today with Jeremy Howard, who is the co-founder of a course I'm sure many of you have heard of called Fast.ai, and he's faculty at USF. So Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure. And today I'd love to talk about a new course uh, that you're working on uh, for Swift. So I am totally new to Swift. So could you tell me a little bit maybe first about Fast.ai in general, and then maybe a little bit about your plans for Swift? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Fast.ai, um, as you know, um, is uh, uh, a kind of a self-funded nonprofit. We do a few things. We do research, we do teaching, um, we do software development, and we do community development. So the, the research we do is all about how do we make uh, world-class deep learning more accessible to regular people. So we do lots of, kind of algorithm development and testing and curation. Um, that research ends up in courses that we provide online through Fast.ai. Uh, there are a couple of main ones people know. One is practical deep learning for coders, which is taking that research and saying how can that be used to make somebody with a year of coding background but no particular math background into an effective deep learning practitioner. And then there's a, um, a more advanced course, which is about kind of research level deep learning. Um, and then we have a community online, uh, which we're super excited about. Um, but then there's a really interesting thing we do, which is to help all that stuff become easier. We have a software library called Fast.ai, which currently sits on top of uh, PyTorch and Python. Um, but you know, we're, we're, we're very interested by what Chris Latner and his team are doing with Swift now and Swift for TensorFlow. Um, we think there are big opportunities to help all four of those areas by um, embracing Swift for TensorFlow as well as uh, PyTorch and Python. Okay, so moving on to Swift. So traditionally, almost all of machine learning development is done in Python and mm -hmm. of course languages like R and now JavaScript. So why Swift? Could you tell me a little bit about it? Sure. Um, so I'm a real programming language nerd. Um, I, I like studying programming languages and I've been involved in lots of different programming languages. Uh, I actually was the chair of the working group that tried to bring scientific programming capabilities to PEL-6 back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and my, my programming language nerdship is driven by a deep discontent with any programming language when it comes to numerical programming. I did a lot of work in C++ in the early 2000s and got really turned off by the long compile times and the complexity of kind of expression mm -hmm. templates. Um, I, I, I quite like C sharp and F sharp, but there's always been like, you know, cross-platform took a long time to come and then cross-platform has kind of come with some performance regressions in some way. So I've always been looking for a really good programming language for numerical computing. Um, Python isn't that language. Python is a great glue language to sit on top of other languages. So like NumPy is basically C, you know, and TensorFlow Python is just wrapping up C++, you know, which sits on top of kind of CUDA C libraries and Eigen, the C++ library. And in the end, it's dissatisfying for a student and for a teacher, because at some point I have to say, this is the point at which we can stop finding out what's going on, because beneath here it's kind of assembly code or machine code or compiled stuff. It's, it's very frustrating as a researcher, like in NLP, we keep on wanting to do more stuff with R and Ns, and we keep on hitting the point where it's like, oh, we can't really implement this different R and N cell, because if we do, then it's not gonna use QDNN anymore, and the performance is gonna fall apart. Swift offers a way past all this. It lets us write on a language that's a kind of a thin layer over the amazing LLVM infrastructure, compiler infrastructure, which kind of can get lots of different bits of an algorithm pulled together, optimize the whole thing for CPU and for GPU. Um, and at the same time, because it has the view of everything going on from top to bottom, it can tell me all the times I've screwed up. So, you know, hey, you thought that this dimension was batch size, but over here you use this other dimension as batch size, and I tried to multiply those two um, tensors. At compile time, I could tell the shapes aren't gonna match. It's huge. Yeah, so I'm very excited about how it's gonna make me more productive as a programmer. It's gonna allow me to turn my research ideas into code. Like at the moment, I keep butting up against things where I just can't, can't do it. Um, and it's gonna let us teach things deeper, which is what I'm always trying to do. Right, so how does this relate to fast.ai? So the, the next course, 
which is going to be in a couple of weeks at the University of San Francisco. We'll be recording it, and then that recording will become our next MOOC in June. Um, it's going to be a seven-part course. It's going to be called Deeper Deep Learning. Okay. And Deeper Deep Learning is going to be all about how do we take kind of a, a, a practical practitioner of deep learning and turn them into somebody who can like go further, like do cutting edge research, get things into production, make things run fast. So of the seven lessons in the next course, the last two are going to be about Swift for TensorFlow. And it's going to be really cool because actually I'm going to be co-teaching it with Chris Latner. And so for people that don't know, so Chris Latner is uh, the inventor of Swift. The inventor of Swift. Yes. So for me, I'm kind of having like a little flushy moment now where I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'll be standing next to Chris Latner, the Chris Latner. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm very excited about what it means in terms of what we can say to these students who are at, at the very advanced level at this point. They've done you know, 100 plus hours of study and they're competent coders. And we'll be able to say, here's a, uh, a deeply well-designed, thoughtful, fast, brilliant language, which has had very, very little numerical computing so far but has the might now of Google and Chris Latner and a brilliant team behind it, the world's your oyster. Like, almost nothing's been implemented. So the class projects are going to be things like, you know, um, create this layer that hasn't been implemented yet, yeah. or, or like, you know, implement this architecture, or be the first person that's run this model end-to-end -end on ImageNet. So the class projects, and there'll also be things like um, help us create the fast AI library for, for Swift for TensorFlow. Yes. So I can tell you the fast AI library for Swift for TensorFlow even has a code name now. Awesome. The code name is Hairbrain. Okay. Hairbrain because it's a crazy idea. It's like this amazingly crazy idea, which is like we can take something that's like so early, but it's going to be such potential and actually start writing the kind of the dev UX layer from the, from the start. Right, so it's this crazy idea. It's awesome. super exciting. But also hair, because hairs are fast. And Swift's fast. And fast AI is fast, right? That sounds cool. And then brain, because we're working with Google Brain on this. So that's going to be our little internal code name for this. So anybody who's getting involved in the next course through the MOOC or in person can actually help contribute to this uh, code name awesome. hairbrain library from the very earliest days. And so for a language nerd like me, it's so exciting. Awesome. And what's the best way for people to find out about the new course? And follow it, keep updates, sign up. Um, yeah, so to, if you want to sign up for the in-person course, do it right now. Um, so just go to the uh, University of San Francisco uh, Data Institute. But that's in San Francisco, so obviously a lot of people won't be able to make it in person. Uh, otherwise, uh, keep an eye on fast.ai uh, in June, uh, where we'll be launching that course um, at, as a MOOC. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, at, at that point, it's still going to be super early days for everything, so there'll be lots of opportunities for, for people to become part of what I think is going to be a very, very, very impactful project for scientific programming and for deep learning and for differentiable computing more generally being Swift for TensorFlow. I'm really looking forward to it. I know I have one last question for you, too. Okay, hit me. So will Swift be primarily for researchers, novices? Long term, how do you see the evolution of Swift for deep learning? Because it's kind of so versatile, um, I, I plan to do a lot of research in Swift myself to kind of get past that boundary I described of places where you kind of can't go with Python as a researcher. Um, I also expect it to be great in production because it's going to allow you to take right. the stuff that you wrote kind of a prototyping time and have something that's super fast straight away, particularly because for most people, not maybe not most Googlers, but most normal people, production inference means CPU, not GPU. And Swift will be a really great option for that because we're going to get all that compilation niceness of LLVM to make that CPU code super fast. Awesome. So thank you so much for joining us. And My thank pleasure. you, everyone. I learned a lot from this talk, and I'm really looking forward to your course. Cheers. OK, thanks very much.